Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we're going to learn about the domain and range of functions. Before we start talking about domain and range, uh, we're going to do a quick review on how to graph linear functions. So go ahead and pause the video and give this warm up a try and we'll check your answers in a few seconds. All right, so go ahead and check your work. Um, we're basing all this off of slope intercept form, which looks like this, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of your line and b is the y-intercept. Um, so in this first equation, we can see that our b value is 0 and our m value is 1. So our y-intercept is 0, 0. It's our starting point. And to follow a slope of 1, we go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, or backwards, down 1, left 1, to make our line. Uh, in part b, our uh, y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 3, and our slope is 2 over 3, telling us to go up to right 3, or backwards down to left 3. Um, and then in the last example, our y-intercept is 0, 2, our starting point, and our slope is negative 4, telling us to go down 4 over 1. Or we could go um, up 4, left 1, um, but it would go a little bit off our graph, which is fine as well. All right, so before we start talking about domain and range of a function, let's review what a function actually is. So a function is a special relation where every input or x value has only one output or y value. So essentially it's saying if we have an equation that looks like this, like f of x equals x squared, or you could write that as y equals x squared, f of x and y are totally interchangeable. That's saying if I pick an x value, let's say f of 2, so I substitute that x value, this is my input, I'm always going to get a single answer. The only answer for 2 squared is 4. So you can see we have this point right here on the graph, 2, 4. For the input of 2, my only output is 4. Um, so this is the graph of x squared. So a way you can check that it is a function is by what's uh, using what's called the vertical line test. So um, take your pencil or any vertical line and you're going to run it across your graph like this. So as you're running your pencil across your graph, it should only cross your pencil at one point at any time. And if it does, we say that it passes the vertical line test um, and is therefore a function. Now, something that is not a function is something where if I have an input, it gives me maybe two or more different outputs. So let's look at this equation. If I have the input of two, so we have two equals, or sorry, let's do an input of four. Four equals y squared. So my input is four. Um, for my output, which is y, there's actually two answers that could work here. We could have positive 2, because positive 2 squared is positive 4, but we also could have negative 2. So here, this input actually has two different outputs and therefore is not a function. So graphically, something that's not a function would fail that vertical line test. So again, if you take your pencil or draw any vertical line, notice that it crosses my graph at two different points. So as soon as you notice that your graph crosses a vertical line at more than one point, we can tell that it is not a function. Um, so today we are going to be working with the domain and range of functions. So here's another uh, visual representation of what a function looks like or something that's not a function. So here we have sets of x and y values. So in this first um, set of uh, numbers, this input, see it has a single arrow, it has one output. This input has one output, this input has one output. So um, this, since for every x there's only one y, this is a function, and we actually call it a one, two, one function. Um, and we call it this because you can see that there's no overlap in the y values. Now if you look at this example, this input has one output, so that's okay. This input has one output, and this input has one output. So every input has only one output. So this is a function. But you'll notice 
that these two inputs share the same output. So while that's totally fine, it does have a different name. We call this a one to many function, but it is still a function. Now something that's not a function would look like this. You can see in this very first um, number, the input of negative two has two different outputs, one and three. So since this output, uh, this x value has two different y values, we know right off the bat that this does not represent a function. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the basic definition of a function, uh, we're going to move on to the domain and range of a function. So by definition, the domain is all numbers defined in the input. So it's essentially all of the x values that work for your function. The range is all numbers defined in the output or all of the y values that work for your function. Um, so there's three different notations that we use um, to write domain and range. We're gonna practice all three today. The first is called inequality notation. So we're gonna try to define where what x and y values work using these four symbols, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. So this specific example here, we could read that this as four, negative four is less than x is less than or equal to eight. So this pretty much describes the x values between negative four and eight. Here's the lower boundary, here's the upper boundary. Um, in this case, negative four is not included because we don't see that or equal to sign but eight is included. So it's a way to describe which x values work for this function. Now, set notation um, looks very similar to inequality notation, except um, it looks a little bit fancier. So here we have to include these fancy brackets, and then we're going to have x or y, and then we have a vertical line, and then we um, essentially write the um, inequality here. Um, so here we would read this as x such that negative four is less than x is less than or equal to eight, or x such that x is between negative four and eight, including eight. Um, the last notation is interval notation. Um, so interval notation, we're always going to be writing the lower boundary and the upper boundary of our domain and range. The first number is always the lower boundary. The second is always the upper boundary. Now, if we want to include that number, in your domain or range, we use a square bracket like you see here with the eight. If we want to exclude or not include a number, we're gonna use a rounded parenthesis like this. So this says everything between negative four and eight, including eight, but not including negative four. So these are the three notations we're going to practice today. All right, so uh, let's look at example one together. So here uh, we have a graph of the function f of x equals x squared, and we're going to define the domain and range using all three of those notations. Um, so let's start by doing the domain in all three notations. So remember, the domain is all of the x values that work. So we're gonna look at our graph and we're gonna also look at the x axis to see where we have um, graph. So here, you'll notice that on the ends of our graph, I have little arrows, implying that they're gonna keep going up and to the left forever and up and to the right forever. So since our graph is going to keep moving to the left and right forever, our domain is actually going to be every possible x value, because again, it's just gonna keep moving to the left and keep moving to the right. So for a case like this, um, we say that the domain is all real numbers. So for one like this, we actually don't need to use an inequality sign um, because it's every possible x value. So for our domain, we would actually just say x equals, and then we write the symbol for, for all real numbers, which is a capital R with an extra vertical line. Remember that symbol means all real numbers. Okay, so let's see if we can now write this um, same thing using set notation. So for set notation, we start with our fancy bracket and then we say x such that, we draw that vertical line, and then we just say x equals all real numbers. 
Now for interval notation, it looks a little different. So for interval notation, remember, we always have to set a lower boundary and an upper boundary. So in this case, since it's going to the left forever and ever and ever, the lower boundary is actually going to be negative infinity. And so we're going to write negative infinity. So negative infinity, we can think of as the smallest possible quote unquote number, although it's not really a number. And since our graph is continuing to the right forever, our largest or upper boundary would be positive infinity. So we just say infinity. And since infinity is not technically a number, we're never going to include it. So we're always going to use rounded brackets when we're using infinity. So this is how you write all real numbers in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. So we just described the domain in three different ways. Now let's describe the range. So the range is all of the y values that work for this graph. So you'll notice that my graph actually stops and turns around right here. So we see everything below zero, there's no, um, there's no y values that we're going to use. So for our range, it's everything here and above, everything zero and above. And it will keep going up and um, up infinitely. So it's everything zero and above. So for the inequality, we would say y is greater than or equal to zero. We see zero is included, there's a point there, and it's everything above it. So y is greater than or equal to zero. For set notation, we'll do our bracket, and then we say y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. And then for interval notation, remember we do lower boundary and then upper boundary. Here our lower boundary is zero. That's the lowest possible um, number that's included. And since it is included, we're going to do a square bracket. It's part of our range. Now, since our graph goes up forever, our upper boundary is actually infinity. And remember, we never include infinity, um, so we're going to use a rounded bracket. So these are three different ways to write the range of this function. Okay, let's try another one together. So here uh, we have a graph of the function um, f of x equals negative 2 to the power of x. So it looks something like this. So here, imagine again that it has little arrows denoting that it's going to be continuing moving in this direction forever and ever and ever. So since our graph again is moving to the left forever and it's moving kind of down into the right forever, our domain again is all real numbers, everything possible from the left to the right. So we would say x equals all real numbers and for set notation, x such that x equals all real numbers. Then remember the way we write interval notation, all real numbers, is negative infinity to positive infinity with rounded brackets. Now let's look at the range, so the y values that work. So here, um, you can see that our graph is starting to slow down and it, it's going to keep continuing to the left and it looks like it's getting close and close to zero, but it's never actually going to hit zero. It's going to get really close, but it'll never actually cross. So in this case, it's everything below zero and not including zero. It's kind of hard to see, but it never actually touches our x-axis. So in this case, our, our range is y is less than zero. Notice there's no or equal to sign because we don't want to include it. So for set notation, we would do y such that y is less than zero, so very similar to the inequality. Now for interval notation, remember it's always lower boundary to upper boundary. In this case, our graph is going down forever, so our lower boundary is negative infinity, and it is not included. Our upper boundary is going to be zero, which is also not included, so we'll do another rounded bracket. All right, um, at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see if you can give this problem a try on your own, um, and then we'll check your answers in just a few moments.
Okay, so in this problem, um, you can actually see that our graph continues um, going to the left and to the right infinitely, which is why our domain is all real numbers. But our graph also is pointing up and down infinitely. It will just keep moving up and down. So in this case, our range is also all real numbers. Um, so here are the three notations for the domain and range of this function. All right, um, I'm going to have you pause the video again and give this problem a try. And again, we'll check uh, your answers in just a few seconds. All right, so for this problem, you can see that our graph is going to continue moving to the left and to the right um, infinitely. So our domain is all real numbers. So these are the three different notations for that. Um, and our range, you can see, is everything zero and below. So you see that there's nothing um, in your graph that goes above that. So our range is y is less than or equal to zero because zero is included. Um, here's the set notation. And for interval notation, remember, it's always lower boundary, which in this case is negative infinity to zero. Notice negative infinity is not included, but zero is included, so make sure you have this square bracket here. All right, let's try another example together. So here uh, we have a graph that is not that doesn't have arrows at the end, so you can see that it actually stops at some given points. Um, so let's start by defining the domain. So again, all the x values that work. So I'm going to highlight on my x-axis where I see um, graph. So I see graph from here at negative 1 to here at positive 2. Notice the scale of our graph. This is negative 1, this is 2. So two tick marks is one unit. So let's see if we can describe this as an inequality. So here, since it's a restricted um, region, it's between two numbers, we're going to kind of write it like interval notation. We'll start with our lower boundary, which is negative 1. Now here, since I see a closed circle, that signifies that this is part of the graph and is therefore part of the domain. So we're going to do is less than or equal to x. And then we're going to do our upper boundary, which is here at 2. Now, since this is an open circle, we're not going to include it in our domain. So we will not include the or equal to sign. So here, this says everything between negative 1 and 2, um, including negative 1, but not including 2. So anytime you have a domain or range that is between two numbers, we can write it like this as a single inequality. So for set notation, again, looks very similar. We'll say x such that negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. And for interval notation, it's actually going to look a lot like this. Negative 1 is our lower boundary. It is included, so I do a square bracket. 2 is our upper boundary. It is not included, so I do a rounded bracket. Now, uh, let's talk about the range, which is all the y values. So I'm going to highlight all the y values that we see on our graph. Everything from 0 up to 4. Um, so here, again, it's restricted between two numbers, so we can write it like this. Our lower boundary is 0. It is included, so we'll say less than or equal to. This time it's y, and then our upper y value is 4. Now, if you look at where 4 is, it's that open circle, so it is not included. So we just say is less than 4. So for set notation, again, we say y such that 0 is less than or equal to y is less than 4. And then for interval notation, our lower boundary is 0. It is included, so we do a square bracket. Our upper boundary, again, is 4. It is not included because of that open circle. So we do a rounded bracket. Okay, let's try one more of these together. Um, so again, let's start by looking at our uh, domain. So I'm going to highlight where we see x values. So we see x values everything from here at 0, and then it's going to move to the right infinitely. We see this arrow, which means it's going to keep moving to the right. So our domain is everything 
greater than zero. Zero is not included because at zero we have an open circle. So we have x is greater than zero. So for set notation, x such that x is greater than zero. And for interval notation, our lower boundary again is zero, which is not included. And our upper boundary, since it moves to the right forever, is positive infinity, which is never included. Now for the range, let's highlight again. Here's all the y values that I see for the graph. Um, so we can see it's everything positive 1 or everything below positive 1. Again, note the scale of our y-axis. Here's negative 2. This must be negative 1, so this must be positive 1. So it's everything below 1, not including 1. So we say y is less than 1. Then we can write that in set notation, y such that y is less than 1. And then interval notation. Our lower boundary, since it's going down forever, is negative infinity, which is never included. Our upper boundary is 1, which is also not included because, again, this is an open circle. So there's our range. So again, uh, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try on your own, and we'll check your answer in just a few moments. Okay, so you can see here that our domain is everything less than or equal to 1. So here and everything to the left. So we say x is less than or equal to 1. Again, this is a closed circle, so we know that 1 is included. Here's the set notation, and for interval, um, since it's going to the left infinitely, our lower boundary is negative infinity. Again, our upper boundary is positive 1. For the range, you can see that it's everything greater than or equal to negative 4. And we have our set notation. And again, lower boundary is negative 4. It is included. And since our graph is going up forever, um, positive infinity is our upper boundary. All right, so now we're going to see if we can graph a linear function that has a restricted domain. So again, it has a restricted x value. So we're going to be graphing this line, but they only want us to graph the areas between um, x equals negative 4, including negative 4, and positive 4, not including. So here's how we can go about a problem like this. Since it is a linear equation, we know that it's going to be a straight line. So if I can find the point where um, f when x is negative 4 and the point where x is positive 4, um, we can really just connect those two dots and draw our line. So let's start by finding f of negative 4. We're going to evaluate the function. So I'm going to substitute negative 4 into my equation. 3 over 4 times negative 4 plus 3. So f of negative 4 equals. So this 4 and this 4 will cancel out, but the negative will remain. So this gives us negative 4. 3 plus 3, which is 0. So that gives us the coordinate negative 4, 0. So let's plot that on our graph with a closed circle because it is included. And now let's find um, f of positive 4. So again, let's substitute positive 4 into our equation. So again, this 4 and this 4 will cancel out, leaving us with 3 plus 3, which is 6. So that's telling us the coordinate 4, 6. So let's plot this point. But again, 4 is not part of our domain, so we're actually going to do an open circle here. It does go a little bit off our graph, but that's okay. We can kind of just eyeball where that would be, be right about here. And now that we have our two endpoints, all we need to do is connect the dots. And there you have it. Um, so we can kind of double check to see that this makes sense. The equation we see that our y-intercept is 3, and our slope is 3 over 4. So up 3 over 4, or down 3 left 4. So this is um, the graph of this linear function, restricting the domain to between negative 4 and positive 4.
All right, let's try one more together. So here we have the linear function f of x equals negative x plus 1. And they'd like us to graph it with the domain of x such that x is greater than negative 2. So it's everything negative 2 and bigger. So let's start by finding that lower boundary. Let's see where we can start here. So let's find f of negative 2. So let's substitute that into our function. Be careful, we have a negative in the function, and then our input is also negative. So I'm going to write it like this. So f of negative 2 becomes positive 2 plus 1, which is 3, giving us the coordinate negative 2, 3. Here's our input, here's our output. So since this is not included, we're going to do an open circle for this coordinate. So at negative 2, 3, we have an open circle. Now our domain is simply all x values greater than that. So since we have one point on our graph, we can use our slope and we can just continue our graph infinitely to the right. So we see here, what well, we see from the equation, that our slope is negative 1. So we could write that as negative 1 over 1, telling us just to go down 1, right 1. So we can plot a few more points and then just connect the dots and that's the rest of our graph. So again, that's this linear equation with a domain that has been restricted to everything greater than negative two. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try on your own and we'll check your answer in just a few moments. Okay, so here uh, we wanted to restrict our domain, everything from negative infinity to positive 4. So it's essentially everything less than or equal to 4. So we can find that upper boundary by finding f of 4, and that gives us the coordinate 4, 2. So we would put a closed circle there because it is included. And then from there, we know that the slope of our line is positive 1 over 2. Um, but we only want the points to the left of negative 4. So instead of going up 1, right 2, we'll work our way backwards. Down 1, left 2. Down 1, left 2. Down 1, left 2. And then our graph continues infinitely to the left. All right, here's the last um, example for this video. Please pause the video and give it a try on your own. All right, so here we can see that we wanted to graph this linear equation uh, with the domain between negative 1 and 2. So our lower boundary is negative 1, so we can find f of negative 1, which is 5. So this is the coordinate we're going to include with a closed circle because of that or equal to sign. Then we can find that upper boundary coordinate, so we'll find f of 2, which is negative 4. So we can plot 2, negative 4, with an open circle because two is not included. And then all you need to do is connect the dots. We can check this um, line should have a y-intercept at two and a slope of negative three. So down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. So it is good to go. All right, um, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.